So let's talk about the number one most important single strategy you can use to win a lot more matches. Now first, let's watch this point in its entirety and then we'll diagram it. Uh, now what we just saw is really the situation you wanna get into over and over again, as often as possible, you want to be doing what Rublev is doing here. And it actually leads to him winning this point. So let's talk about this. The first thing is when you're hitting and, and you're a typical singles player, balls on your left side are more shots that are defensive, typically, right? We tend to to block balls and keep balls going with our backhand. On our forehand, though, we tend to be more aggressive. That's just typical. You might be, you know, an exception to that, but that's typically what happens. I want you to notice here, he bombs this return of serve down the line, and his opponent can barely get to this ball, barely gets this ball back. And because it's a weak ball, and this ball is going to Rublev's backhand, he does not accept it as a backhand. He turns that backhand into a forehand. And what that means is instead of just hitting a backhand and keeping the point going, because it's a weak ball to his backhand, he doesn't accept it. He hits it as a forehand. When he does this, he now can hit typically a stronger shot than he would have with his backhand. Now, when you are in this situation and you move around your backhand to hit a forehand, it is a great idea to crush this ball inside out to your opponent's weaker side. That way you've got your strength going to your opponent's weakness. Whenever you can put strength against weakness, the chances of winning the point go up. Now, a couple ideas here. By hitting this ball, and we see him doing this cross court, by hitting this ball cross court, first he gets geometry on his side. He has the longer part of the court. See, cross court, the court is longer than down the line. From corner to corner, it's 82 and a half feet. Straight ahead, it's only 78 feet. So if he hits the ball cross court, he has a longer distance to hit into, so he's going to be more consistent. Lower part of the net, yada yada. It's great. Another thing, though, is by running around this ball and hitting forehand against backhand hard, he does not have to worry about a down-the-line backhand by his opponent. There's all of this area here that he does not have to cover because it wouldn't be smart for his opponent to take a cross-court ball, which is what I call a crooked ball, and make it straight. It's hard to straighten out a crooked ball because it's easy to miss that ball wide or hit a ball too much in the middle and then you're just asking for trouble. So it's actually a cool thing here for Rublev. Rublev really only has to cover this area of the court. By moving around this ball, now he doesn't have to worry about the down the line because it's strength against weakness and it would be a very low percentage shot for his opponent to go down the line. So he can expect his opponent to hit this ball back cross court, which the opponent does. And now Rublev stays. If you notice, Rublev does not come to here, which is bisecting the down the line and the cross court shot. He's not worried about getting to here because the down the line is not in play at the moment because he just crushed the ball to his opponent's backhand side. So we actually see Rublev staying over here, trying to keep more of the court on his forehand side. And now that ball comes back cross court and we see him move again. Now, again, his opponent doesn't know where this ball is going to go. We just talked about Rublev not having to worry about the down the line. Well, guess what? His opponent does have to worry about the down the line. Rublev can rip this ball down the line or cross court. So his opponent has to cover this entire area. His opponent has to cover this entire area where Rublev does not have to worry about over here. So when you are in this situation... When you can move around a weak ball that comes to your backhand, when you can move around it and hit your strength and you can pound this ball and you can see he crushes this ball for an absolute winner, 
when you can do this, the chances of winning the point go way up. So anytime your opponent hits a weak ball to your backhand, you want to, and we can go back two shots, when the ball is weak to your backhand, learn to move around it. You can see how he's doing this. He's facing to his right, but moving to his left. Watch this. He faces to the right, but he's moving to his left. He's moving around this ball. When you can get into this situation where you can put forehand hard cross court to your opponent's backhand and then put yourself in that situation again, going cross court again or going down the line for an absolute winner, the chances of winning go way up. Now, the tactic we just saw Rublev use is the most valuable one in singles. And it just so happens to be the foundational positioning strategy in the Fuzzy Yellow Balls singles playbook. Over 50 pages of play after play to beat your toughest opponents. And if you go right at the beginning, page nine, here it is, the red zone. Will Hamilton over at Fuzzy Yellow Balls calls this the red zone because if you know American football, go Philadelphia Eagles, if you know American football, you know that the last 20 yards before the end zone is called the red zone. If you can get into that area of the field, the chances of scoring and putting points on the board go way up, whether a field goal or a touchdown. It's the same thing. There's actually a red zone in single strategy too. And it's what we saw Rublev do. And here it is right here. And to see a four minute video on when you have the singles playbook, all you gotta do is put your phone over this QR code and up pops Will Hamilton explaining exactly this situation. And if you can get into this situation over and over again, the chances of winning the match go way up. Again, grab my link in the description. I'll also pin it in the first comment. Now, if you're looking for new people and maybe some unsuspecting victims to use that red zone strategy against, then use my link in the description for Play Your Court, and it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. I'll also pin it in the first comment. Find people to play against, maybe stronger opponents, find people to practice with, and find coaches in your local area to help you work on the strategies that you learn in the playbook. All links are in the description and pinned in the first comment. When a weak ball, if you're right-handed, when a weak ball comes to your backhand, move around it, and hit your strength cross court against your opponent's weakness. When you do that, you don't have to worry about a down the line shot. Because when you crush a ball cross court, changing the direction and going down the line is high risk for them. So if they do it and go for it, they'll most likely miss, which is good for you, right? You wanna win more points than you lose. But the, which means you don't have to come you know, back toward the center worrying about that. So you can hang out over here. Now they float another ball back. You make it a forehand again. You have now your strength. They're recovering. You can crush the ball behind them or you can now take the ball down the line. They won't know where you're gonna go. They're gonna be late breaking for whichever direction you hit. Because it's your strength, you can usually end the point with that shot. Work on this strategy. Get yourself into this situation as often as possible. And that's what the playbook teaches you. No matter what type of opponent you're playing against, how to get into that foundational strategy of the red zone. Use this strategy in your next match and there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.